Well, joining me now is uh, Turkish analyst Zia Meral. Thank you for being with us. Um, very comprehensive report there from uh, Jane O'Brien. How serious do you think Turkey is when it says relations could be harmed? It is a truly sensitive issue for the Turkish society, not just for Turkish foreign ministry or Turkish government. The emotions are quite high. This is the biggest crime you can speak of in any legal term. It is a serious allegation and an accusation, so clearly the Turkish society feels quite strongly about its own narrative. Um, at the most superficial level, what is at stake here is diplomatic ties between the U.S. in terms of trade agreements, but yet the exit strategies from Afghanistan and Iraq assumes a great Turkish support. Similarly, um, recent relationships between Turkey Turkey and Iran has caused concerns in Washington. So if the time comes when the U.S. pushes a stronger agenda on Iran, that Turkey might not support U.S. policies. And, and you think Turkey is serious when it says that? Or is it just a sort of diplomatic gamble? Perhaps it's both. It is a gamble. Um, no Turkish government will be able to um, come against the tide of the national sentiments about this, yet at the same time um, Turkey feel really strongly about this. So in a sense the ties between Turkey and US, Turkey and NATO, Turkey and Europe are quite deep and strong and it has been quite patchy since the invasion on Iraq. So this will cause a major damage. I mean let, let's look in a minute, in a, just in a second, on, on what, what the effects for, for America and NATO would be, but can Turkey afford to be without outside NATO. I mean, after all, this is a country that wants to join the EU and yeah. so on. So it's got to be careful too, doesn't it? Exactly. I mean, neither, I mean, Turkey cannot afford to be outside of NATO or have bad relations with US or the EU, nor does it want to. But what this means is an increasing national sentiment that what the world is more interested in is publicly naming and shaming Turkey. And I think the number one question which I have in this process as someone whose personal attitude towards this issue is that of sorrow. The death of one and a half million Armenians is something which my people as a Turk here I'm speaking um, has to come to terms with and, and genuinely process. But resolutions as such, even though they're not legally binding, um, they're not legally problematic, the, 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 the barrier it creates between Turks and Armenians is damaging also for Turkish-Armenian talks that are unfolding at the moment. So let's look at it. Uh look at what's at stake for, for Washington then. How important a part would Turkey have to play if Mr. President Obama is going to keep to his ideas of withdrawing from Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, eventually? Turkey provides around 70 percent of the, um, the, um, the resources that goes into the U.S. troops in Iraq. Um, the troops would have to pull out of Iraq in substantial parts. The same thing applies to Afghanistan and the more proactive role Turkey takes in Iraq and Afghanistan the more stabilizing it has been as a Muslim country. And I think Iran is the missing link here. Um, U.S. needs Turkey to back its um, stand towards Iran and nuclear weapons program. Um, and it also applies to stability in Caucasus, not just in the Middle East, because of the Georgia and Russian tensions, the new rapprochement between Turkey and Armenia, and Armenia and Azerbaijan over Nagorno-Karabakh has giant ramifications for energy policies for Europe as well as for U.S. This, this is, this is difficult. Difficult. It, it puts President Obama on the spot, doesn't it? I mean, he made the campaign pledge. He talked exactly. about uh, genocide, I think, during his campaign. He yet now he's president. Yeah. He needs Turkey more than ever. Yeah. What's he going to do? It is tough. I wouldn't want his job. I never wanted his job for that very reason. Um, he did mention that his personal views have not changed. Secretary Clinton has mentioned that her personal views or previous attitude has not changed. But yet at the same time, here, the, it's not just enough to remember a sad event in history. The question is, how do we remember this and what kind of future does this enable us? So you can simply pass a resolution and declare this a, a genocide, but if this blocks the possibility of communication between Turks and Armenians, if this damages the future of Iraq, Iran and Afghanistan and Armenia itself, which has been suffering on their blockade and Georgia itself and <clears throat> excuse me, in Azerbaijan, then to what end this resolution can be said to be a victory? I think the only people who would feel a sense of victory over this resolution outcome would be those who would want to see a little sense of vindication, um, a really small vindication satisfaction with giant ramifications for present and the future. All right, Zia Meral, thank you very much for your time.